I am T. Colin Campbell. I hold an endowed chair at the Cornell University in the Division of Nutritional Sciences. Um, my official title is uh, Jacob Gould Sherman Professor of Nutritional Biochemistry. I'm also director of the China Oxford Cornell Project on Diet and Health. When I was young, we promoted our product because it was nature's most perfect food. But it took on a slightly different twist as time passed. I mean, it's the most perfect food for cats. As I say, this is a little troubling for me personally at the time because actually I was raised on a dairy farm. There's me up front, maybe I think it's about nine and a half years ago or so. And uh, another just sort of sidebar story here before I go on. I talked about casein, dairy, and so forth. And so we have a lot of evidence now that dairy is a troublesome food, a very troublesome food, not just because of what we found with respect to its ability to increase cancer. But, you know, we, my family, we don't use dairy anymore. We haven't in some time. And I suggest if we want to do it right, you know, get with the program. One of the most serious problems we have in Western nations is the, cons is the consumption of cow's milk. And I, I, I really have no doubt that but in the near-term future we're going to hear a lot more discussion about the adverse effects, the adverse health effects of dairy um, uh, compared to what we have heard before. And I just would make one final point, and that is that the dairy food, the things that we're learning now, that almost seem kind of new, when you go back into the literature, some of this information has been around for a long time, for 50 to 75 years, very nice research. And so there is a, yet another question. Why has it been hidden from view? Why does the public know this? I mean, we tend to think that protein is so important and we think that milk is food from heaven. And, uh, you know, because it has all this nice protein, because these days it has calcium, so it's said. And um, uh, it's, it's going to be a, a, a tough sell, I think, to some extent for obviously a lot of people. But the evidence is becoming abundantly clear that cow's milk is a serious problem. And now we've got alternative kinds of products that we can use. Instead of cow's milk, get away from that. I, I just find it kind of strange that actually we as a species it's the only species, I can't think of another species on the face of this earth that decided to go around and suckle the milk of another species. Kind of odd. Uh, cow's milk is perfect. It's a perfect food, but for calves. Human milk is a perfect food, of course, for babies, for human babies. But cow's milk being given, given to humans after they've been weaned makes no sense. Uh, the story concerning the adverse effects of cow's milk and more particularly the adverse effects of cow's milk protein on various ad, uh, health outcomes such as increasing cholesterol and, and heart disease and the like. Those kinds of studies have been largely attributed just to the simple pure effects of the protein in the milk. And I'm talking about good milk, you know, pristine milk if you will, uh, for the most part. Uh, and that's the way milk had been through the ages and we're learning now that wasn't a very good idea. But if that wasn't a very good idea, the milk we're getting today has got to be considerably worse. And I say that for the following reasons. First off, many of the cows these days are being injected with bovine growth hormone, or BGH, in order to stimulate milk production, supposedly so we could have more milk, which sounds rather, rather ridiculous idea to me. But the animals are being injected with bovine growth hormone, which tend to increase their milk consumption, sure enough, by 15, 20 percent maybe or so. Um, but it comes an expense to the animal. That is to say, in order for the animal to, consume, to produce uh, 15, 20 percent more milk, its udders become 20 to 25 percent larger, much more pendulant. And as a matter of fact, if one looks at the cows in these kinds of situations, their udders are practically touching, or even they are, in fact, touching the ground at times. And so these animals, in fact, 
aren't even sent out to pasture like they used to be. They're kept more or less in their short lives in, in the barn. And when the udders are in that, form, in, in that condition, uh, irritation, inflammation arises, infection arises, and a condition called mastitis occurs. And in order to control the infection for these animals, we have to inject more antibiotics into the udders. And this is done routinely. And so the, the cows these days are receiving much more antibiotics that end up in the milk. And in addition, because of the infection, the milk these days has quite a cocktail. It's got, now we've got some hormones to go along with the previous stuff. We've got some more antibiotics. And we've got some more blood and more pus that comes from the infection. And if that sounds like an ideal food, then I don't know what an ideal food is. Then, and we ask ourselves, where does milk fit into this? And if we look at the nutrient composition of milk, it's very clear. The nutrient composition of milk is nothing more than another animal food. And so therefore, it's not surprising to find that it produces the same effect as many other animal foods, and maybe more so. I like to call milk basically nothing more than liquid flesh.